Thank y'all. <laughs> Holy Ghost. All right. So, can I, first of all, I want to uh, give honor to my wife. Come here, Mom. Yeah. She's, uh, we, uh, it leaked on me. Uh, we woke up this morning, we still love each other. Weird, huh? Isn't that true, buddy? That's true. Yeah, so, you want to say something to the folks? Nothing? Let you say it. You going to let me say it? Mm-hmm. You're not nervous about what I'll say? No. No? All right. Well, we, we appreciate y'all letting us come. Thank you. And our family's doing good. We're doing good. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Bless you. I got to do a little work, all right, buddy? <laughs> Holy Ghost. Yeah, I want to uh, start out about this deal right here. Because uh, I don't want y'all's coats. I don't have a big enough truck to carry all y'all's coats. But I want to read y'all something that was pushed on me by a little Indian woman, uh, not India Indian, uh, uh, Azteca, down in uh, Mexico in the state of Veracruz. Uh, y'all that know Mexico, I'm a jarrocho, uh, Veracruzano. All right, uh, so we got this place, and it was about probably 1,000 or 1,100 uh, people I had prepared, I'd killed a couple of cows, uh, and boy, these people started flooding in. It was a, it was a big deal, and I was pretty happy. Uh, the weather worked out, because where I live, everything hinges on the weather, because the people don't have vehicles, very many of them. And if the crops, if, if there's plenty of rain, and the crops come in right, and the people are happy, Lots of people show up, but if there's drought or if there's something wrong, uh, you know, there's consequences to all that. Okay, so, but this, there was lots of people showed up, way more than we thought. We was looking for about 800 and about 1,100, 1,200 of them came, and boy, that's really a good problem to have, because uh, where, where we live, uh, whoever comes to your property, you feed them. It's their custom, and so we do that too. So we have these big cauldrons full of beans and rice, and and y'all understand moly? Some of y'all, yeah, moly picoso, really hot, mucho chile, and uh, uh, so so uh, so I'm standing up there, you know, and I'm really excited. We're fixing to get it all going. Everybody's eating because you do that first, and when you're feeding that many people, it takes it takes hours. I mean, we're feeding up 150 or 200 at a time, but still, it's turning all that stuff over, washing all those utensils, and it's on and on. So the practical side of what we do is tedious, right? So I'm standing up there, and I'm praying for all these people because they're coming, and they're sick, and all this. Well, this lady walks up, right? And she, she's, uh, I know where she's from because of the braids in her hair and the type of embroidery she's got on her on the front of her, her clothes, I can tell what part of Mexico she's from, and, and it's a long way away, and she comes up, she says, and she's got this pile of clothes in her hand, right? And no, uh, I'd never seen this before, all right? And she says to me, I want you to pray over these clothes. Uh, I'm gonna take them home because my family, my whole family, my husband, all my kids, grandkids, everybody's just about dead. And you're go- what you're going to do is lay hands on these clothes, and my family's going to be healed. And, you know, and I look at her, because it's in Nahuatl, or uh, Aztec, and, and, and I'm, I'm thinking I'm missing something, because I'm not native tongue, you know, Aztec fella. So I ha- got me an interpreter, uh, and I go, am I missing something? They go, no, you're not missing anything. I said, well... So I asked her, I said, 
Where, where'd you come up with this? Because she cannot read or write, this lady, right? She's an older lady. And she goes, well, you came to our village, and you said God can do anything. I said, that's exactly true. I said, there's no thing impossible for God. For us, we're the, we're the stumbling block. We're the problem. But for God, there's not a problem. All right. So she said, so I gathered up some articles from some of my, fa- my family, and I brought them. Now, y'all, you don't understand. Uh, for her, it took her five days to get there. Okay, because she don't have any money. So she started walking from the mountain. Uh, and so people pick her up. People pick her up and drop her off uh, uh, and that, but she don't have any money to pay them. So it's, it's, it's mainly voluntary on people who feel sorry for an Indian lady, old lady walking down the road, right? Okay, so, so she comes walking in with this bundle of clothes, and she tells me, lay hands on this stuff. And so and around me, there's always, uh, uh, I'm going to try to be nice, but there, there's always these theologians that want to pick apart the words coming out of my mouth. They cannot do the job, so they want to they wanna critique me because I don't know the exact right phrase to say. All I know is Jesus is king, be healed, right? So I, it works. And so I don't get that whole religious side of life. All right, so, but they're always there. And I mean, these are educated, high-dollar word people. And, uh, and so I turn to them, because they're always there. And I turn to them, I go, hey, I need a verse that gives me permission to do what this lady wants. I say, because it's odd to me. Lay hands on clothes instead of the person. I mean, I'm, I'm up for whatever God wants to do, but I mean, I, I really, it does matter the precedence I start. It does matter. All right? And so if I can have one verse, I prefer three. But if I can have one, I can at least argue. Right? So they gave me this verse, and there actually ends up being three of them in here. But, but uh, if you will, turn your Bibles. To, is Amplified okay this morning? Yes, that's right. All right? So if you will... Turn your Bibles over to Acts chapter 19. And, and I want you to look at this because to me, the way I view the gospel, if it happens in the New Testament, I can do it myself. That's part of the covenant to me. That's my example, you know. And then if I don't find it in the New Testament, I'll bounce over to the old and because God never changes, just men and the laws of men change. Right. Is that right or wrong? Right. That's right. Okay, so if you will, please go to Acts chapter 19, verse is 11. Now, I won't, I'll use your words, I don't care. Mine says God did unusual and extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. What words are extraordinary miracles? Yep, by the hands of Paul. So tell me, what, what word does your version have? Does anybody have a different version? Unusual, unusual, extraordinary. Yeah. Say it with me. I want unusual and extraordinary miracles. Say it. Yeah. Say, say, I want that. I want it. See, I want that as well. I want that. Okay, now here's, here, here's another question. Because most of you were raised in some religion that uh, idolizes men and builds statues and you worship those statues, right? I don't. I don't agree with that, period. Uh, I'm, I'm up for esteeming people and honoring people and blessing and on and on. But never do I go to that idol or that name for a blessing or help. My blessing and my help comes through the name of Jesus. All right? Okay. And so there's a point of contention for some of y'all. Not me. (laughs) So I want to just break it down just for a minute because there's another verse I want to go to 
there's a couple of things I'd like to get done. I got to travel. Uh, I apologize. I'm not a long goodbye person. Uh, some of you sitting here, like people in our work, man, they'll drink five cups of coffee for an hour or something while they're saying goodbye to each other. And I said, look, what a waste of time. <laughs> Lord. And so I'm not that guy. I, I'm going to be up here next thing you know. Where'd they go? Uh, they gone. <laughs> I got to make it to Everett. It ain't nothing on you. I'm the one scheduled it. It's my fault. All right. So, But I still got to try to do it. All right. So y'all be blessed, and if you think I was curt with you as I was walking out, it's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to be. I just, I'm just i just a work-oriented type human being, you know. All right, so I want to I break this down just a little, all right? Verse, night, uh, verse 11 first. Uh, I want you to answer a couple of questions. Who did the miracle? Now, read it right in that verse. What does it say? All right, tell me again. Who did the miracle? God. Yeah. Who did the miracle? God. Who did the miracle? God. It was not Paul. Paul was the doorway. He was the vehicle. He was the submitted, obedient human that was standing there that God used, but God is the one doing the miracles. Hello? If you will listen to me, that will relieve you of any kind of showmanship or presentation. Hello? Because we can't do this. You can't. There's, there's, you can't. Even the witch doctors I know, I know some really good people that are black magic warlocks and they're powerful. Man, they can do stuff. But they'll tell you right off, it ain't us, it's the devil doing this. So I'm telling you, it's God that does it. You hear? For us. God. Say it again. What God do? Extraordinary. Say, I want it in my life. I don't want to be uno que caliente la vaca. I don't want to be the seat warmer Christian. I don't want to be that guy. I'm not going to be. You see, I don't even sit down. Y'all notice? I don't, I, don't, I don't ever. I'm never comfortable. I'm not okay. I, I'm annoyed. I'm aggressive. I'm put out. I'm a lot of things. But I let it happen to me. I allow myself to be manipulated. Put on the spot. Critiqued by everybody. Because this thing is real. Say it. God did the miracle. And the kind of miracles that I want are, I don't want something a doctor can do. I want something they can't do. I want extraordinary. I want unusual. Hear me? I want that. I want that in my life. I want that in my wife and I's marriage. I want that in my family. I want that in our work. I want that in the breath, the air I breathe. All right. Now, this is another point of contention, but I want to bring it up because I like confrontation. You work things out now, not by hiding or everybody being okay with or compromising your stand, but by looking each other in the face and coming to an agreement on how we can walk together. Because we do oppose each other. Every one of us in here. I don't know. I mean, if we got to know each other really, we probably wouldn't last long together. Y'all hear me, right? Because you know what I know? I, I do this every day of my life, just about. This right here. And I do it in 90 different nations. And I do it with 90 different tribes, slash, depends on how many there are in that nation, of people, languages, color groups, food groups. I mean, it's... Nothing is the same anywhere you go. And everybody where you go believe they got the tiger by the tail. Yeah. Say yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, now, so what I want to do is let's figure out God did the miracle. Yeah. Tell me what he used. Tell me. There you go. 
See, everybody says that. I disagree. What does it say? What does it say? No, it says the hands of Paul. See, and now we all believe Paul did it. He gets the credit and the glory for it. Let's all build a statue and let's start a group of churches, the Pauline churches. When in fact it was his hands God used, it was, it was, it was that man, God would have used a stump if he wanted to. But we have this need for idolatry. I need to break that, okay? Let's break it. So let's speak to our hands. You got a pair of them on you somewhere? <laughs> you don't just have you don't just have one, you have two. So let's just pick them up and look at them and say this. Say hands, hands. you will do what Paul's hands did. You will let the power of God run through you. And you will do extraordinary and unusual miracles. In Jesus' name. Okay? God used, and David, you're splitting hairs. Yeah, I am. I need you thinking. I don't need you getting a tax right off that I can't do it. Only people like Paul can do it. But it turns out you have a couple of hands on you. So you can't get a tax right off. You have to do this. Use your hands and let the Spirit of God go through you and heal the sick, okay? All right? Say yes, I'll do it. All right, we're going to let our hands be used. Say it. All right, next verse. So that, now watch. Look, look, here, look up here. Here's a red one right here. Handkerchief. It matches my terminology. So that handkerchiefs, towels, aprons, which had touched. Look up here. Touched his what? Skin. All right. What happened? What happened in your verse? The people, normal people, took their cloth and did what with it? They went home, went to the hospital, went to a nursing home. What did they do with it? What does it say? It says they took that stuff and went back to the sick and the demon possessed. And what happened? They were healed and they were delivered. Right. Say, I'm after that. That's what I want. So that's why we do this. Because that lady, that little old lady, provoked me. Because I didn't know about it. I, I didn't, it's never in church. It's never brought up. I was in church my entire life and never even heard it. Uh, and I'm not against my parents or the church or you or your church. I'm not. But there are methods where we can get help and the anointing will touch our stuff and heal our sick. Okay? There, God has provided avenues of help. And we need to figure it out. We need to study and try to figure out what we can do to make things better for a better, a larger number of people. Okay? So that lady, listen, you're talking about funny. I thought it was funny. You, you probably will. So they read me that verse. I read it to her. And she says, okay. And she shoved her clothes on me. You know, it was a bundle of them, right? It, you know, and it smells like a village. And it's, you know, it's, I don't know. It don't smell like Tide, you know. <laughs> and so, and I, I don't curse anybody. I, it just is different for me. And so I'm holding these clothes and it smells like smoke, you know, a village. And so I'm sitting there and all these elders and we all lay hands on this stuff and we just give them back to her. I mean, it's the oddest, to me odd. Odd, because I've never seen that or done that before. And when I, when I gave it back to her, I'm expecting her, you know, to go sit down and be part of the campaign. Uh, no, no. She, it took her five days to get there, and she just walked straight off and left, went back for five days. Do you hear me? Yeah. That right there is, well, that's, that's some kind of dedication to me. That's, that's a belief system. I need that. Yeah. Yes. 
Hear me? Hear me? Yeah. I mean, that lady was desperate. And most of us aren't. And then when we do get desperate, then we start leaning toward the way she was. Don't we? Say yes. yes. Okay. All right, now. All right. So a month or so later, I'm over in her part of Mexico, right? And I'm at but a different village than theirs. And I'm, I'm there. We're doing service. It's a lot smaller than a big campaign. It's probably a couple hundred folks or something. And because when I go somewhere now, villages come, you know. Full five-hour walk, they come. Okay, and so I'm sitting there, and we're waiting, and all of a sudden this group of people walk up. You know, and I recognize them and all that, and the lady comes up, and she goes, Das kamate nuit ni David, which is Aztec for thank you very much, Brother David. And I go, Ashleno, 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 which is, uh, it, whatever it was, it was God. It, it wasn't no man. And she goes, do you remember I brought those clothes? I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're the one, aren't you? She said, I am. And she said, let me show you my family. And I mean, it must have been like 15 or 18 of them, right? Wow. Look, that lady walked back five days, gets to her house, starts with the grandbaby first, puts the grandbaby's clothes on, the baby's instantly healed. Right all the way up to her husband. Everybody's healed instantly. So, so it really, it really taught me a lesson on New Testament practical Holy Ghost fire. On how we can help each other more. And this is how. So that's what we're doing this for. Okay? Everybody got it now? I don't, I don't want your coat. I got one. <laughs> All right, so let's jump a verse, if that's okay, please. Let's go over, yesterday we was in Hebrew, or Hebrews chapter 2. Let's jump a couple chapters, Hebrews 4. And I, because I'm after, because there's so much stress, anxiety, in the modern church. Because people know that God can do, he just... He just ain't doing it for us. So who do you think's at fault? We are. We are. Because let me let me let me tell you how I sort it out. First of all, I go to God. And whatever the problem is, I try to find me a Bible verse or I try to find me some elders and I sit down with them and I say, all right, what about this? Uh, who's to blame? And at first we eliminate God. And then that leaves two probabilities, the devil or us. And almost always, you know where the chips fall to? And we all want to blame it on the devil, but I'm going to have to interject a few uh, talkative points. You hear me? Most of us in this room are not living in rest. We're living in stress and anxiety and unbelief and regret. Say it with me. Regret. regret. Get, out. Get out. Unbelief. unbelief. This is not a house for you. Get out. Get out. Stress. stress. Anxiety. anxiety. Leave, my Leave my presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. So what I want to speak over you is the purity, the rest the real rest of God. You know, you can see me. I'm, I'm, I'm revved up. I'm always revved up. I mean, this lady is not. She is calm. She sits there and watches me. I'm like that little, that little squirrel that drank that coffee on that cartoon movie. My, grand, my grandkids make me watch that about 6,000 times. And my favorite part is when that little squirrel drinks that Red Bull or whatever that was he's drinking. And they go so fast, the whole world stops. Well, I'm that way with her. <laughs> and she's just sitting there waiting for me to run out of juice. <laughs> because there was, there was some high-profile principalities that came after us, right? 
And we started one by one beating them. Well, when you start winning, it gives you it gives you courage that you're on the right trail and it lights you up. Right? Okay. But it also creates uh, an energy field around you that's not very doable for other people. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so my wife asked me for something called peace. And I said, I'm not into that too much. I like war. I'm a soldier. I like, I like confrontation. I like taking ground uh, uh, by force. I, I like that. It, it, it helps me to be believe I'm alive. And my wife says, you're alive, David. But I need peace in our home. So I started searching and researching that. Turns out she's right, of course. And so I started asking God, what can I do? How can, how can I be who I am but be like you are? and conquer the planet because it's God's will to take over this planet but you can't do that if you're a pacifist you gotta be like you know you gotta because I'm near about 100% of the time got the shield of faith up here and I'm looking you in the eye and I mean it this is on buddy this is donkey Kong time it's on I'm taking over Y'all got it? Okay. So how do you how do you not kill your wife and kids while you build the kingdom? I found some answers and I'd like to share one of them if that's all right. Is that okay? Because we need to know how to be able to work together when we're different from each other. And that's not talked about very much because it's uncomfortable because everybody believes they are the cat's meow. <laughs> everybody believes that. <laughs> no, there ain't anybody better. I'm it. You're looking at where it's going to go. I am the evolved one. <laughs> that's, you wouldn't say that. You'd be humble. No, praise the Lord, brother. No. Until you step out that door and then <laughs> you transform. <laughs> Come on, all right. Let's 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 take a breath and get us a little rest about it, a little peace. So it says right here, uh, 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 Hebrews 4, and I want to look at starting verse 8 because I don't have a two-hour session. Okay. In the Amplified, Hebrews 4, 8. This mention of rest, say I won't rest. But at the same time, I want my hands to do extraordinary miracles. Say it. Extraordinary. So how do you manage peace, but yet you're aggressive enough to defeat hell? Right? Is that a good question? I think it is. Because, because I have, I'm very fortunate. Uh, for instance, a few days ago, I was over here in, uh, in North Dakota, and we... Uh, got this girl healed, uh, got run over by a car. Uh, she was, uh, I don't know, she was, uh, boy, she was hurt. And, and uh, what she is, is an Amish lady. Okay, so the Amish movement, y'all have exempted it from life, right? Most people don't even know what that is anymore, Right? Okay, so, but I, for some reason, I don't know the reason, they want me in their life. I'm not kidding you, it's beautiful. Uh, started out in Pennsylvania, in Virginia, uh, and the Holy Ghost hit those people, and then it went, we went down into Belize. We have a big deal going with, there's 3,000 families down there, and I mean the fires on us, on them. I mean, the most strict sect of these people, and God just walked in and just took them. It's beautiful. 
I mean, it's beautiful, right? So because of those results, now I'm getting invited to lots of places that's Amish and Mennonite. All right? So I get up here in North Dakota just a few days ago. And that girl, that girl, I just wish you could have seen how awful it was for her. And God healed the girl. She got run over by a vehicle, five years of operations, metal, screws, nuts, bolts, broken bones, and God heals her in a second. One second. And that just happened. So my question, okay, what do you think that family thinks about God now? That family got healed, the mom. Beautiful girl. Good night. But she was all twisted and broken and screwed back together, nuts and bolts. All the metal got taken and all of her bones healed. Say it with me. I want that. I want that. Say it. Okay, so you're a forgotten people, right? Most of us feel that way. Say, you're right, brother. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we got that. Religious cliche out of the way. <laughs> so most of us feel forgotten, abandoned, left behind. Say yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, you're not. You're the apple of God's eye. Hallelujah. You're the one he'd pick off the tree. You've got to believe that, though. I've got to talk you into the... Allowing the rest of God, the peace that passes understanding, to come into your heart and mind and be governed by the Spirit of God. Okay? Okay. I just, I just, I just was pleased that God healed that girl. I, didn't, I never know when it's going to happen. She just walked up and I said, stop. But she's over there. And I just said, Jesus, and I mean, she picked up and flew. And she was flying through the air. She got knocked out. She was healed. Say, I want that. Say it. I want, I want you to have that. But, but you can't get it by being a brat. <laughs> you can't get it by being entitled. I need you to lose that. That's the world system. Okay? I need rest on you. I need peace of God on you. And I need the understanding of the spirit of life to come and reside in your heart. Say, I can do that. Say it. I can do that. I can do that. Say it. All right. Look what it says. If Joshua, verse 8, had given them rest... God would not have spoken afterward about another rest. Okay, so, so Joshua gave them the promised land. I mean, land flowing with milk and honey. The whole promise of God, Joshua's God did it. But that was not the ultimate goal. There's another day. Say, I want it. I want another day. Say it. All right. It says in verse 8, so then there... There is still awaiting a full and complete. Say, that's what I want. I want that. I want that. In Jesus' name. Because I am rarely content. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but me, son, my engine's railed. Like that woman will lay down. I admire her. I watch her. She lays down, and I'll bet you it's 30 seconds. She's gone, sleeping. <laughs> Me, I lay there. Look at the clock. Oh, another hour. Uh, and then I drift off. And then I wake up in like four hours or five, and my motor's running. <laughs> yeah. and, and I look at her, and she's just. <laughs> and I go, are you serious over here? How awesome must that be? What a rest. What a blessing. I tell her all the time, you gifted human being, you can sleep and rest. Oh, now, I need.
continue to speak life and peace over you and on you in Jesus' name. You let me do that. Holy Ghost, I bless your water, I bless your air, I bless your land, I bless your job description, I bless your marriages, I bless your kids, I bless your grandkids, I bless your great grandkids, I speak peace over you, Holy Ghost. Look what it says in verse 10, for he who once entered God's rest, say I want God's rest, has also, look at this, ready? This is why I know we're not very many of us in it. Look what it says, ceased from the weariness and pain of human labors. So you think it's because of lack of money, I don't. It's lack of God. Because God owns everything. And all of us say, I'm the head, not the tail. It turns out most of us are, you know, the tail. <laughs> most of us are. But I need rest. I need to be the head, not the tail. I won't change. God, help me. Boy, you know, it's not, I'm healthy, I'm, I'm, that makes everybody mad, and I, I love my wife, that's another thing, my family's good, that's another thing, our money's not, not, not tanked, we're, we're, you know, we're good in a lot of areas, we've been working on lots of stuff for a long time, and it's working out, you hear me? But I still feel like, <laughs> man, I need some. I, need, I don't need to slow down. I just need rest. I need, I need contentment. Godly contentment is great gain. Say it with me. I need to cease from the weariness and pain of human labors and struggles. Say it. One of my brothers... Uh, he was a new convert, he and his family, and uh, so they came and they burned his house with him in it. He, and they escaped, they did escape, but, but they put him in jail, kids and all, right? And so some people brought me word that it happened. Me, I don't, you don't understand. You burn his house, you have just burned my house. So I, I told my wife, I gotta go. That ain't, me, that ain't my problem. <laughs> You know, that's a village problem. Dude, I went out there. You hear me? I mean, I'm, I'm on it, Jack. Man, you're going to get killed. Praise the Lord, brother. And along the way, I'm going out to this village, and I'm not very far, and I run up on this lieutenant. And he's got a whole bunch, a whole squad of soldiers, and he flags me down. This is this is jungle now. I got a big four-wheel drive, and he goes, he give give a guy a lift. And I thought, yep, I need these guns in the back of my truck. How's it gonna look? I go rolling up, and I got the military in my truck. And and he gets in the cab with me, and he's saying, "What are you doing out here?" I said, have you guys heard yet about the, about the Christians that got attacked? He said, what? No. I said, that's where I'm going. I'm trying to see if the people are still alive. He said, need a hand? I said, yes, sir. I said, I'll get you some food. I'll get you boys some food. We'll kill a chicken or something. So... Yeah, have some mole. <laughs> Bien picoso. <laughs> Better cruzano. <laughs> and so, look, we get there in the military. You ought to have seen him. I mean, he jumped out, man. He took the perimeter. He, you know, I go walking up, you know. And they think I'm a lawyer. <laughs> and all I am is an over-revved knucklehead, you know. <laughs> Come on. Maybe. And that, you know, I see that is real, that that's who I am. But you saw God provide me with some help, didn't you? And that, man, that lieutenant went and got the village council together, set them down, quoted them the law, 
that every person has the right to serve the God they want to and, and worship the creator God. That's what the Mexican law says. Yeah. And, and he quoted it to it. It was beautiful. And I'm just sitting over there going, yeah. <laughs> and he said, this is what's going to happen. Y'all fix to go get some material and y'all going to rebuild this man's house. And I go, yeah. <laughs> now I'm telling you, it, things happen and they complicate and it's persecution's real and it's awful. It's a lot of things, right? But if you can stay in the peace of God, if you can stay in God's mind instead of the world's system, if you can cease from the pain of laboring to be right. Hello? If you can trust God, there's benefits. Amen. Look what it says. Say it with me. Weariness. Weariness. Pain. Pain. Human, labors. Human labors. You're not running me anymore. I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus name. So look at verse 11. Look what it says. Let us therefore be what? What does your version say? What does it say? What does it say? Leaven, what does it say? Strive to enter. Wait a minute. We're supposed to cease from strife. Well, that's true. But godly strife. Seeking God is a correct format of strife for humans to present I mean, you, you wouldn't believe it. I get up early in the morning. I fast every day. You can ask them. I haven't eaten a meal here with them because I, we're fasting. All right? That don't make us awesome. It makes us right. That's not impressive. What that is is right. You hear me? It's right to fast and pray and seek God the Father. It's right to strive, to press in, to, to be that athlete that wants the premium, wants the gold, wants the medal. Hear me? Yeah. It's right. Okay. This thing says be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter the rest. I want it. Say it. In Jesus' name. I don't want unbelief. Look at the end of that verse. We all pop that back up there, please? That verse again, verse 11. It says, look at this. We don't want to fall by the same sort of disobedience. Say it. Disobedience. disobedience. Unbelief. Unbelief. Lying, spirits. Lying spirits. Get out of my house. Out of my house. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. I'll receive the rest of God and the abilities of the Father. So. I want you to look at verse 12 because there's a couple things I want to say. I'm going to read verse 12. Everybody knows this verse. But what you didn't do is read verse 8, 9, 10, and 11 before you read verse 12. Hello? Well, I do. I'm that guy. I have read the Bible through so far five times this year. I want to know what it says. I want to be able to quote what it says. I want my, my life to exemplify what this says. Amen. Hear me? Yeah. Not the latest fad or fashion. I want this yeah. to be my mainstay. Yeah. To be my staple. To be my beans and rice. Yeah. In Jesus' name. All right, verse 12, it says, For the word of God, say, that's what I'm interested in. Speaks. Say, speak to me, word of God. Speak to me, word of God. Say, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. I want it alive in me. Say it. I want it alive. And it's full of power. And it's full of power. Say it. I want it. In the Amplified, it's a little bit different than this one. Look what it says in mine. It says, Making it active. Say, I want to be active. 
You see, I got that part covered. I got the active part. <laughs> All right. Operative. Say, I want to be, I want to be working. I want op operative. I want it to be happening in my life, in my family, in my work zone. I want it working. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Shatatalabasha. And look at this word in Amplified, energizing. You see, it's, you see me energy, right? How can I be this old and have this, this? This ain't normal. It's not. And I like it. And, and it, I know it's supernatural. I know God's on me. But I don't believe I'm special. I believe it's supposed to be normal. I believe the world system on telling us the latest drug and the latest problem. Every, every commercial you see on that television tells you what's going to happen to you and how it's going to happen to you and the side effects, but you need to take it anyway. I'm not. I disagree with you. There's another way. It's the word of God. It's alive. It's energy. Man, it's operative. It's active. It's right, y'all. Yeah. All right. It's effective. There's another word. It's sharpened any two-edged sword, penetrating the divine line of the breath of life, soul, and the immortal spirit. Say, I want to be immortal. Say it. You know what that means, immortal? That means you're not going to die. Wait a minute, brother. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. You're correct. You're correct. Jesus said, believe me and live forever. Your choice. I choose to believe Jesus. I choose to believe that he can give me extra time or keep me alive, whatever his discretion is. No, aren't you saying you're not going to die? No, I'm saying Jesus is king. And we'll sort it out when the future gets here. You don't speak into my future, Jack. God does that for me. Hello? And I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I just ain't going to let you speak negative to me and speak death on me. I'll excuse myself and go to the toilet and I just won't come back. I mean, I mean it. I do that so much, and it's annoying. So many big shots because they really want to fight. I, it ain't no fight. Jesus is king. I don't have nothing to discuss with you. Jesus is king. If you believe that, we good. Let's go. We'll sort out that other stuff in a minute. <laughs> Look what it's saying right here. This is so awesome. Two-edged sword penetrating to the dividing line of breath of life. Come on, breath of life. Be Jesus for me. Come on, Arthur, and finish of our faith. Come on. Feel me, Holy Ghost. I need you. Holy Ghost. The deepest parts of our nature exposing. Say, I want to be exposed. Say it. When the whole time the world is teaching us to hide in our castle, hide in our, behind our walls, in our cul-de-sac. No, I want to be exposed. If I got something wrong with me, I want it out. I want to be honest, but I want to live in rest and peace. And holding stuff and holding back, that's not okay. Sweating bullets of whether it's going to be exposed or not. No, I'm not into that. Come on. I'm into letting God be in charge and letting him shout it on the rooftops if I've got something needs to be shouted. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. This right here says exposing and sifting. Say, I want it in my life. <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Exposing and sifting. I want... The dross out. I want the pure, fine flour, the, the meat of the sustenance that makes this work, the energy, the power. I, that's what I want. I don't want anything that would impede that or stop that. 
I don't want it in me. You're, you're wanting to be perfect. Ta da. Like Jesus, you're right. That's right. You can't do that. Well, you're probably right. But why can't I try? Why can't I want to be a Holy Ghost, God, Jesus person? What's wrong with that? I know. It's right. Yeah. I want to be that. Say it. In Jesus' name. Okay. Now, the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. And I want you to look at verse 13. Because I know some really shifty, uh, boy, they're, they're just smart. But they got ulterior motives layered in, in, in their trap making people. I, I don't want to be around that. Uh, you know, I am, I am awkward and I'm aggressive and I'm blunt. But you know what? You exactly know what you're getting. Ain't nothing layered. Ain't nothing hidden. Say, I want to be free. Say it. I want to be at peace. Say it. Yeah. Look what it says in verse 13. Not a creature exists that is, not, that is concealed. So that idea they have of all these hidden agendas, and that's a lie. God will reveal it. But I don't want it in my life. I'd rather you be mad at me because I'm just too truthful, Amen. too honest. I want, you to, I want you to be free of me. I don't want to own you anything. I don't want nothing. I don't want to own you. I got enough stuff. I got enough. My, myself is a lot. You hear me? I mean, you can ask her. She'll, she'll be over there. She'll be going off on something. I'll tell her, woman, 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 call me tea. Calm down, woman. I don't want that. I'm not into that. Now you know if I if I check mark that, there's gonna be bloodbath. Let's don't do that. And she'll go, You're right. You're right, David. Thank you, Mom. Now what else you want to talk about? Beautiful day or have a kiss. I mean, what do you want? I, I, I just don't need all this fighting. Hear me? I'm not going to do it. It's not my fight. I'm going to walk in power and energy that no one's ever seen before. I'm going to walk in the Holy Ghost essence of glory. Say it. Me too. Me too. That's right. And I'm going to be revealed. Say it. And when God reveals me to this earth, there's going to be some souls and miracles. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. All right, look, let's see here. All things are open and exposed. Say, I want it to be that way. What's this? Naked and defenseless. And every one of us have the best defenses that we can muster. We try to go up the next level to get more energy so we can buy more defenses. <laughs> look, it's not going to do you any good. Jesus is king. Let him be your defense. Let's be exposed. Let's be open. Let's be vulnerable. Come on. You can trust God. Yes. He is our defense and our rock and our fortress and our castle and our light and our water. Yes. He is our source. He is our resource. Y'all with me or not? Yes. Okay, what? So, I was over yonder. I like, this happened a, a few uh, weeks ago. I was over there in uh, uh, I was over there in Kansas City, and I'm in a group of people. Must be four or five hundred of us, maybe, right? Yeah, Benny Hinn's wife, sir. What's her name? Susan, Suzanne. Yeah, she's there, uh, and uh, we're all healing the sick. We're doing what we do, right? And they, they brought this black fella in in a wheelchair. You know, and he is broken. <laughs> Ten years been in that wheelchair. Good man, golly, good fella, good family, lives in a good neighborhood, got a good job. 
He was coming home like he did the last 25 years. A stupid drunk kid. Run a stop sign. T-boned him. Broke his neck. You hear me? You okay, Mom? No, you just don't like the attention, but I brought it to you anyway. <laughs> it's me. It's me. I told you. I'm that guy. I got to watch her. It's up to me to watch her. Ain't nobody else going to. Some people do, I guess. Okay, look. Let me do my story. Okay, so you got a broke neck, but you, you got a good company, you got insurance. Say, yeah. 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 He's a guy from the suburbs. Got a good, nice house, good, nice little 2.35 kids, you know. <laughs> yeah. Till you get a broken neck. Tell me what happens next. Exactly. Ten operations. He lost his house, lost his job, lost his family. So what is he now? They call them wards of the state. Say, I don't want to be that, David. Say it. I don't want you to be. I'm serious. This man, golly, he was broken. He's broken, y'all. And he comes up there, he's got that stuff all on him, you know, and he's he's all broken. We lay our hands on him. Shalabata, just like on everybody else, right? Amen. Jesus' name. Not one thing happens. And then all of a sudden the people gasp. He looked to see what it is, and uh, man, the only thing he's got left is that dumb chair. And he's fighting it. Say, I want to be that guy that fights that chair. Say it. Because you're either going to fight it or you're going to stay in it. Because all the odds, there is nobody walks out of those chairs with broken necks. You're quadriplegic for life. Say, yeah, we got that figured out. Say it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he's over there fighting. And it's it been 10 years. His muscles ain't going to do that. His bones ain't going to do that. His tendons, ligaments, that ain't going to happen. His, it, the, 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 the motor nerve is not functioning. The orders are not going down the column. Do you hear me? Yeah. And he's standing over there. Whack, he hits the deck. The church finally responds. Jumps up, grabs him. You know what they did with him? Stuck him back in the chair. Say all you want to. Curse them all you want to. But the part of life that you are are the ones that want him back in that chair because you don't think he can walk. Say, I'm going to change, David. God's going to touch me, David. Say it. And I'm going to help him get out of that chair. I'm gonna help him get out so he starts chair. fighting that chair. The second time he gets up, and this time there's people, because I fuss. You hear me? I'm cranky. I'll say it. I do. It gets me in so much trouble. <laughs> and so they're up there now, and they're helping the guy walk. Now watch, now watch. Ten years. Lost everything. And here he is. He walked right out. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. 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 How about that? That is a beautiful day. Okay. So what happens next? What do you think he believes in Jesus about now? Well, he is just, he's like me now. He's annoying. 
He's all over everybody's goodies. Nobody, everybody likes that. Yeah, we want him healed until he's looking you in the eyes and coming with that look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now just back up. No, I ain't no backing up. Mm -mm. I was born for such a time as this, buddy. You hear me? Yes, sir. Look, so another day goes by, then the third day, and we're fitting to leave. All right, well, here comes that guy in, the black fellow, right? But now he's pushing another wheelchair. He's got another fella in it. <laughs> and I'm back there at the back with the technical people. We're just going to show a video of a healing. And, uh, and uh, he walks right up on me, and I look over at him. Whoa, how you doing? He said, I'm doing good. <laughs> I said, who is this? Well, this is one of my friends that we used to sit in the chairs together. <laughs> but I got out of mind. <laughs> And I want him out. I said, what's his story? And the guy tried to tell me, but he had a double, uh, what's it called, Debbie? Stroke. A double stroke. And so his body ain't working. His, he can't talk. So people are translating for him to me. I said, really? How long? Seven years. I said, you've been, you been chained to this thing for seven years? Dude, hadn't you had enough of that? I know, he's saying stuff to me, right? I just can't get it. I mean, I speak good several languages, but, you know, stroke language, I don't get as much. Yeah. <laughs> and so I told, I told the, the, the first guy that got healed, I said, bring him up yonder, and I'll be there directly. And so I got finished, went up there, and he's sitting there. All right, the guy's sitting there. I did my thing. I walk around, look people in the face, you know, with these fire things I got. <laughs> Because we got to get healed. You hear me? We have to. We have to. We have to be healed. And so as soon as it was done, they brought that wheelchair up there. And that guy sitting there, you know, and he, and I said, what do you want? You know, it, it's obvious what he wants. But if you look in your Bible... Every time they brought somebody to Jesus, he asked them 100% of the time, what do you want? So, you ready? Okay. So this guy's sitting there, and then the guy that invited me, uh, it's a uh, school, uh, I don't know, uh, healing deal people, and he says, you ready? Watch what he says. He goes, do your thing, David. You know, I'm, I look at him. It's not like a light switch. You, you don't, you can't judge, you don't manage God, buddy. Like you manage electricity. You do not manage God. He manages you. Man, I got a little bit growly, you know, grumpy. Man, I looked at him. <laughs> That's not the time for that, right? <laughs> Seems to me like it always is. You know? <laughs> so I said, what do you want, sir? Tears running right down his face. Please. <laughs> you know what that did? That drew out of me compassion. Hear me? Yeah. That's what heals. It is. And so I said to him, okay. I reached up, he was bald headed, so I slapped him. <laughs> Be healed. And I said, now look, I'm not going to sit here. Y'all are accustomed to sitting there for like two hours and banging on people and everything. You know, and the longer you go, the louder you get. I said, I, that's not me. I said, you see this line here? I got 400 people to pray for. I, I'm going to give you about three seconds. And now I got to go on to the next person. And it's not that I don't care because I do. It's just it's like two hours worth of work here. So I might as well get on there and roll my sleeves up and push it on out. What do you think? So I got down the, down the thing about 10 people over here. And the whole crowd gasped. It once. Ah! And I look over there, 
Dude, the guy's fighting his chair. I mean, it looked like just two days ago. Same exact people to hold him up. Espíritu Santo y la gloria. Come on, Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, Holy Ghost and fire. So I need you to want this rest, this peace, this power, this anointing, this fresh oil. This, it's a new day. This is a new touch. So will you please stand up? Aquí, ma. Voy a querer agua. Por favor, ábrelo. Ya no puedo con un, una mano. Gracias, mujer. Huh? Holy Ghost. Espíritu Santo me ama a mí porque Cristo mi alma salvó. <laughs> Mama, que vaya orando por las cosas, por favor. Holy Ghost, hallelujah. So, I'm going to take a few minutes. I have a long way to drive. Some of y'all probably do too. But I still want to just stay in that rest, right? No stress, no anxiety. In Jesus' name. This deal's working for me. You hear me? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. So, hermana, ¿qué queremos? ¿Qué quiere hacer? What do you want to do? That's all right. That's all right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Cristo, Cristo, todo para mí, suya, suya. 